Okay, good morning everybody. It is proper Friday for Kenzie. I'm not on a Thursday, but on a Friday. I uh, hope you're all really well out there. Uh, lots and lots happening in the news, as you will know. Uh, but today, what I want to talk about is uh, is heroes. There's been an enormous amount of conversation and, and chatter on uh, Instagram, on Facebook, of the news about what a hero actually is. And it was amazing because I've been reading uh, this book, which is called Natural Born Hero. Uh, by, by Christopher McDonald McDougall, and it's an amazing book. Uh, he's a runner in the United States, um, but this is a story he found about the Second World War. It's an adult book, uh, so you won't be able to read it if you're a child, but maybe when you get older. And that got me thinking about this book about heroes and all the talk in the news about heroes. I just dropped my notes. Uh, and then it got me thinking about what the definition of a hero actually is. And in the book, uh, Christopher McDougall says that a hero from the ancient Greek actually means carer, somebody who cares for you. Uh, and that got me thinking again about your parents are your heroes. They're, you know, the people who look after you the most. Um, and then thinking about that, about all the parents and everything they're doing for you out there at the moment, with everything that's going on in the world, and then that got me thinking about my own parents. Uh, and then that got me thinking about my dad. Uh, who's still alive, he's still around, he's called Max. Uh, he's a great name to us out there. That's why I'm in year five, because I know there's a couple of Maxes in this room. Uh, it got me thinking about him, and a story which is in our family, which is about me and my dad. Okay. Uh, but it starts off, this story starts off, we've got a map up on here. Uh, we're down here, aren't we? <coughs> London, Reading, we're just about there. And this story starts up in the north of England at the moment. Oops. Uh, like here. I was born in a place called Blackpool. And I grew up in a little town near Lancaster uh, called Morecambe, which is right on the coast here, Morecambe. And I grew up there, and it overlooks the beautiful Lake District. Yeah, amazing place. So what happened? When I was about, well, uh, 10, yeah, around about 10, I got obsessed with fishing. And I got obsessed with going sea fishing. I don't know where this came from, but I just got obsessed. I had two mates, Thomas and Mark, and me. And we used to go fishing most weekends, all the time. We basically moped around an awful lot, caught a few fish, chucked them back, and occasionally we'd catch a nice big one, take it home. My mum would freak out, but we'd try and cut it up and eat it, and barbecue it, and things like that. We had a great time fishing. I mean, something that totally obsessed me. Uh, and what we do sometimes, which is great, we have, we'd be able to go bait digging, and you'd go out into Morecambe Bay when the tide went out, and we'd dig for bait. And you'd pick out these worms, you know, be a long lug worm, or a ragworm, and ragworms had these pincers on the, on the back of them, which would come out and try and get you between fingers. And the, the thing was that you knew if a, if a ragworm got you, you'd never let go. That was the story. Never let it happen. So anyway, I was totally obsessed with fishing. My dad was kind of at the sideline thinking, yeah, you're obsessed with fishing, so what? And we get on with what else we've got to get on with. Uh, and then this happened. So I was at, at home, and I, I can't find a magazine. Yeah, pretend this is a magazine. Right? And it was called Sea Fishers Monthly, or something like that. I can't actually remember what the magazine was called. And I was 12 years old. And I was leaving through the magazine one day, and I saw an advert, and it said, come to the Isle of Barra to go sea fishing. And they, this company had a hotel on the Isle of Barra, let me show you where that is. Uh, and I wrote off, and this is the end of the day before you email, so I wrote off, I was only 12, to go on holiday on my own in Scotland to go sea fishing, because I thought none of my family wanted to go with me. I don't know what I was thinking about. Anyway, Barra, Shrink the map again, so we're going right the way up north, up north here, up north, further up north, is right over there, in the Outer Hebrides of Scotland. It is absolutely beautiful there. And the sea fishing was supposed to be the best in the whole country, probably in the whole of Northern Europe. So I wrote my letter to this company to say, right, I want to come sea fishing with you, only 12 years old. What happened though with the post, my, my name's Nigel Hoff, so M Hoff, 
and my dad's name is Max Hoff, so M Hoff. So when the reply came from this company, it came through the letterbox, my dad picked it up and he thought, oh, they've made a mistake, let's put an N instead of an M. So he opened it, and he opened the letter, and there's this thing saying, uh, dear Nigel, uh, really interested in you coming sea fishing with us, here's all the details, here's how much it will cost. <coughs> I have no money, my dad didn't have very much money either. Uh, and so I thought, I came down for breakfast, and the letter was on the table. And I thought, this is it, I'm in for it now. Anyway, he, he said, what's this letter? And I went, well, that's about me going sea fishing on my own. I know I'm only 12. And he said to me, which I was quite surprised about, he said, I'll tell you what, we'll go together. And I'm like, what? We'll go? So this is what he did. We got an old caravan, my mum, my brother, uh, my dad and me. And we used to go off in this old caravan all over the place. But this time, he decided he was going to drive all the way up from Morecambe all the way up here, all the way to a place called Oban, which is there, and then take the ferry across to the Isle of Barra on the Outer Hebrides. But that wasn't all. He said, we're gonna get a boat. I thought, yeah, right. And he found an advert in the paper, and he found a dinghy. Now, a dinghy is like a little boat, basically, with some oars, and it didn't cost very much. And he put that on top of the car, he closed his electrical business for one month, how he afforded it, I don't know, and we drove all the way up here, across here on the ferry, and then we went fishing in Barra, and then we went all the way up through Benbecula, up to North Lewis, up to Harris, all the way up to Lewis there, fishing. And we had an amazing time, this little boat, rowing out into the most beautiful seas, and all these beautiful beaches out there, amazing. It's like the Caribbean, but a bit colder, with a lot of midges. Uh, but it was an amazing trip. And that's not why he's my hero. I mean, I think that was an amazing thing for him to do, but we had such a great time. There's a story really untold later. So we spent all this time driving and catching ferries, and then we went across back to the mainland to a place called Gerloch, which is here. Now, this place called Big Sand was incredible. And it was, they called it Big Sand because that's what it was massive sand dunes, huge beach. And out here was this island called Longer Island, and this is where the story starts properly. My dad and me were on the beach there with the little dinghy, rowing about, having some fun. And I then did some research because I'd seen out here on Longer Island, whoops, whoa, <laughs> that's what Bank of Scotland. Uh, let's get that back. Technology, eh? So out here, I'd done some reading about rocks and a fish called halibut. Now, I'd never caught a halibut before, and I wanted to catch a halibut more than anything. And on my research, at 12 years old, these rocks off Longer Island were the place to go. So in we got into the boat. I got in, fishing gear, tackle box, life jacket, and my dad, he was rowing. So he's there. So my dad's rowing out. And we're singing some kind of song. And I was thinking, well, we're going to get out to Longer Island. Longer road than I actually thought it was going to be. So we ended up, this is the most beautiful weather, by the way, just off this point on Longer Island, trying to catch halibut. So we spent a long time. We caught a place, which is a flatfish, which is quite big when we caught it, so we're going to have that for tea. And nothing else, no halibut. Then what happened was, over on this side, the most enormous cloud suddenly came out of the mountains, this huge mountain called the Torridon Mountains around here, was coming towards us from the sort of northeast. We didn't notice, because we were in there fishing off this point. We were looking out that way. The weather looked beautiful. And at one point, my dad's in the boat, so he got a fishing rod as well, so he's fishing, and he looked. And Nigel, he said, that, that's a storm. And I went, oh, no, 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 Dad, don't worry about it. We'll be fine, we'll be fine. One more minute, two more minutes, ten more minutes, let's catch some halibut. My dad was getting increasingly worried about this storm, I could see on his face, but I was determined to catch a halibut. By that time, the cloud had come all the way across Big Sand, everyone on the beach had gone, and then it enveloped us, surrounded us with this enormous storm. So there was lightning coming down, the wind picked up, but the wind was blowing us that way. We had no engine on the boat, and my dad said, we've got to go now. So, 
your magic to turn the boat around. I'm sat here in the boat, absolutely soaked by this point, pouring with rain. My dad is rowing back towards the beach. We were getting nowhere, nowhere. The wind and the tide were pushing us out to sea. We were going this way, not that way, back to where my mum and my brother were waiting for us on the beach. Now, my dad, being the dad he is, from Yorkshire, didn't give up. Uh, but I was only 12 years old. I was absolutely petrified. I thought, this is it. This is where it all finishes. This is where the boat flips over, we sink to the bottom of the ocean, and that's it for us both. But he didn't give up. He kept on rowing and rowing and rowing. And eventually, after, I think it probably took about an hour, rowing back, he was exhausted. You could see it on his face. I was looking at him thinking, this man is my hero. Because without him, without him caring for me out here in the sea, it'd be all over. If I was here, out here on my own, it'd be finished. I'd be drifting out towards New York and wouldn't make it. It'd be that far. But he kept rowing. He was exhausted. When we got back, just got back, and I, I thought in the boat, honestly, the waves were enormous surrounding us. I thought this is it. We got back onto the beach. I sat there in the front of the boat, the bow of the boat, absolutely petrified, shaking with cold, and probably shaking with fear as well. My dad, you can see on his face, was incredibly worried, but we got back. The beach, sorry, the boat beached, like that, we were there. There were huge waves all around, we had to get out of the boat really quickly, jumped out of the boat, try and get the fishing gear out, put it there, and what did we do? We looked at each other, we gave each other the most massive hugs, and oh, you know, we made it. And then we looked at each other and we started laughing. I don't know why the tension was released, but we started laughing with each other about what had just happened. Because often when you get out of a really tricky situation, sometimes humour is the best way to get that stuff forward. Uh, and the story doesn't mean much, but it's just a story about how parents are your hero. They're there to take care of you. And it was just something that came into my mind and I thought I might share it with you because you might have some similar stories about your parents as well, or your grandparents, or other people in your family. Uh, anyway, that story ended happily. We had a fantastic rest of the holiday. Um, I didn't go fishing much after that in that boat, and then we drove back to Borkham, and life continued. But I still remember that story. When I see my dad, uh, we often sit, have a cup of tea, and sometimes we'll remember that story together. So, just something to share with you. Uh, I hope you're all well out there, and I'm really looking forward to seeing hopefully some of you back at school for the 1st of June, uh, but we'll see how that all pans out. In the meantime, stay safe and uh, see you soon. Bye.